we recall where the Lord said in the book of Matthew, he said this, he said, by our words, we will be justified. And by our words, we will be condemned. And what he's saying there is that our words literally determine our future. Our words determine whether or not we receive from God. That's the, when he says justified, we become justified in what we are saying. And on the other hand, uh, thy words shalt, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. If we speak words of condemnation, and, and I think we all have dealt with that or are dealing with that, uh, just being truthful, uh, we, we began to speak how we feel, which is not faith. What we need to begin doing is speak the word of God. And, and a really good, good way to, to exercise that is in accordance with Job twenty twenty eight. The Lord says, you and I shall decree a thing, and he will establish it for us. We shall decree a thing, and he will establish it for us. And, and, and getting back to, to Matthew, where uh, by our words we are justified, by our, our, our words we are, are condemned, we, we have to come... We have to come to that understanding that words do what they say, you know. And, and if, if we are more confident in what we are feeling than what the Word of God says, then those words are going to cause problems in us. You know, and, and we've all grown up in the world, you all, all of us. And, and, you know, <laughs> let's say that today I stub my toe and then my response that comes out of my mouth after I ooh and ouch is, well, what next? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> that word, what next, spoken of, usually in faith, you know, it's going to produce a next. It is. Because we believe that something is going to happen next. We have to combat the enemy. You all, it's, it's not just us. It's the enemy. It's the enemy throwing them darts at us to keep us from receiving all that God has done to, to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants us to be justified in what we say. God wants us to have an expected end to whatever situation that we find ourselves in. And, and again, the number, way, number one way to combat all of that, those, those darts of the enemy, not, number one for myself, I'll tell him, no, liar. You, you're the father of all lies, and I'm not going to receive your lie in the name of Jesus. Amen. I will not receive it in Jesus' name. And, and then, secondly, I'm, I'm confessing the word. I don't care how much my knee is hurting. I'm going to not speak according to the pain in my knee. I'm going to speak, 1 Peter 2.24, that with his stripes, I am healed. With his stripes, I am healed. And when I decree that, the angels of the Lord pick that up. Words of justification are picked up by the angels. Psalm 103, for they hearken unto the voice 
of the word of God. And so when we speak that word, the angels of God get busy. They get busy. Now, we want to see it happen in the next second. Amen. <clears throat> when we, our faith gets to that point, it will. But we're have, we have to learn the roadway to faith is speaking the word of God over whatever situation we find ourselves in. Amen. I mean, speak it. Hallelujah. Walking in Walmart, and then and, and, and all of a sudden, his knee hurts or hip hurts, and I just say it. With Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, I will be justified. We, we have to look at the word of God, you all, and, and really dig into the importance of words. We do. And, and, and we also have to we have to know that it is God's word for us to prosper, for us to prosper, for us to prosper, for us to prosper, us to prosper and be in good health. And he has provided us with everything that we need to prosper and be in health. Right. Hallelujah. I, I, I have uh, decreed that I am debt free. I am debt free in the name of Jesus. The Babylonian system of this world is to get you in debt. So they can, so the enemy can control you. And now here comes the word of God that says, I want you to prosper. I don't want you to be in debt. Amen. And so now I speak the word. He became poor that I might become rich. Amen. And not just money, but rich in all of the attributes of the Lord God. Yes. Hallelujah. I, if it's... if. If it's faith, which is one of the attributes of God, my faith is growing daily. Amen. Hallelujah. I am more blessed today than I was yesterday. Amen. And boy, was yesterday an awesome day. Amen. I tell you, just give the enemy a good old black eye. Hallelujah. Because your words, when they are spoken in faith, are going to produce what you say. Listen, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. If life has taught us to walk and to speak negatively, then that is what our future is going to be like. It's what our future is going to be like. And God tells us, God, just, just listen to these promises. Whosoever shall say, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, regardless of what the mountain is, you all, and, and this is something probably, I, I, you know, we should just say it over and over again. In this world, we will have tribulation, or in this world, we will have mountains. They're going to come. For, but whosoever shall say unto this mountain, hallelujah, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt. Now, if, if what we say isn't happening, it's because we're having doubt. Guess who's the author of doubt? The enemy. Spirit of doubt, I call it. And just, we have to learn how to rebuke the enemy, y'all. We have a real enemy. You know, rather than just riding on a horse that, we ain't even, we, we don't, he doesn't have reins on, he's just going wherever, you know? We need to take a rein on this thing, hallelujah, and exercise the word of God. 
for the angels of God hearken, listen to, and do the voice of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel better today than I did yesterday because with Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. Amen. It'll go on. It just, just make the enemy. Enemy, <clears throat> yeah, he has no power. Amen. But boy, he's good at deceit. He's good at trickery. He's good at, at trying to exalt his words of doubt over the word of God and to get us to believe it. What kind of future do you and I want for our lives? We just simply speak it into existence. Amen. Literally speak it into existence. And, and the way we do it is we've just got to Whatever scripture it is, we just got to say it over and over and over again until it becomes faith with us. Hebrews chapter 10, hold fast the profession of our faith, nothing wavering. And what he's saying there, we may say it for five or ten days and now we don't see a, a, a result, so now we begin to waver. And we quit and just say, I guess, oh, well. And, and here's the beautiful thing. God is there, and, and he slows down the work of the enemy. Uh, sometimes he just slaps the enemy out of the way, you know. But God wants us as his sons and daughters to be as Jesus Christ is. Everything, as we read the Gospels of, of the Bible and we watch the Lord Jesus in action, not a single place in all of those four Gospels will you hear a negative word come out of the mouth of Jesus. Never. I only speak the words of my Father. That's what I do. And, and because of him speaking those words, those 21 times that those, those Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees and Herodians uh, tried to get rid of him, you know, because of the word of God, sometimes, you know, when they're trying to take his life, he just walked through the middle of them. And, and they were standing there asking, where is he? Because the word of God is alive and it is powerful, and it will do what it says. Y'all with me? We don't have to be sick. We don't have to be poor. Amen. We can be successful in all that we do, because when God says, it is my will for you to prosper, then we began speaking prosperity into our lives. And prosperity is coming. If when we have tithes and offerings, you are giving in faith, you are giving in obedience to God, and are delighted that you are doing something that satisfies him, the windows of heaven are going to be opened on you. Amen. So, there's another declaration. I thank God that the windows of heaven are going to be opened up upon me and we'll pour out blessings. There won't be room enough to receive. I just thank you, Lord. I praise your holy name. Amen. And bring it to pass. Hallelujah. I remember this guy I used to work with. This is years ago, you know, and, 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 as, as I was a supervisor at UPS, and, and of course, in the, in the city, you know how crazy the drivers get in the city. 
I, one of these days, I'm going to have a wreck. That's what he said. And whenever I would go with him, he would say something like that. You know what, y'all? It was weeks later, and he had a wreck. He literally spoke that into his own life. And, and we need to ask God to help us. And he'll help us. Again, I'm going to reiterate this. One of the works of Holy Spirit is to help us. To help us. And he will help you. You may not sense it, but he's still helping you. You may even be looking for something, but when you ask him to help you, he's going to help you. And he's going to help you in ways that you don't quite understand. Amen. And, and so <clears throat> what God is saying is that for 2020, what you say is going to really be important. Angels are increasing in the earth because demonic spirits are increasing in the earth. And that's all because we are in those latter days. From a prophetic standpoint, you all, this is not going to last but a few more years. That's all I can say. The day or the hour Jesus said, no man knows, so that includes me. I don't know. But from a prophetic standpoint, we are in those days. We are, we are literally seeing floods, pestilences, earthquakes on a daily basis. They're here. Nation rising against nation. And, and <clears throat> we've got to be praying about that. Because there are several of these nations in the world today that have nuclear weapons. You know. Now, we're not going to be here when all of that takes place, but we can slow it down. Hallelujah. That whatever, <laughs> Psalm 91 says, A thousand will fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. Only with mine eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked. But as I walk in Christ, as I dwell in the secret place, a thousand will fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, and no plague will come near my dwelling. I confess that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God says, you shall decree a thing, and I will establish it for you, and my blessing, my favor will be upon your life. He's, he's saying that because you are doing as I say, I will also add favor. In other words, I'll give you benefits that you haven't even asked for. I will bless you. And I've been seeing some of that in my own life. And, and I just praise God. I'm also, also 2020, you all, uh, it's the year of, of, of answered prayer, prayers that you and I have been praying for months, weeks, years. This year, those prayers will be answered. If you are an individual who has had a prophetic word spoken over your life, this is the year that that prophetic word will manifest. Hallelujah. If you've had a vision, and it has, uh, years ago, uh, so many that... The enemy will, will come along and try to make you just say, oh, that'll never happen. And then, toop, that it's cut off at that moment. I say, well, Lord, if not today, then tomorrow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We 
We were created in his image and after his likeness. And we can say and believe and whatever we say, it will come to pass. You know, when we get to heaven, I want God to take me back to when he created this universe. When he created the heavens and the earth. I want to see the earth appear by just his words. By just his words. And God said... And he said, in faith, that's all he has. He can't be tempted with evil. The enemy, there's no way he's going to cast a, a, a thought of doubt into the Lord's head. I mean, the Lord is the Lord, and I change not. I change not. He's always the same. And he said, let there be light, and there was light. Let the firmament be separated from the firmament so that there is water down here, then space, and then water up here because it all used to be together on the earth. Let the earth bring forth the green herb, and it came forth. We can learn from our Heavenly Father. And, and again, the promises that God has given us, 1 Corinthians 3 says, are all yes and amen. They really are. They really are. But we really have to learn, saints, we have to learn to speak those, those scriptures of God until it becomes faith within us. When, you know, when we start out... Uh, <laughs> There may be this feeling that we're being held back. Anybody ever experience that? Just ignore it. And you just keep confessing. And you keep confessing. And you keep confessing. And you keep confessing. Hold fast to the, to the word and keep confessing. And then at some point, and I'm sure it will vary with all of us, at some point, we will believe what we are speaking. And when we believe what we are speaking, then it comes to pass. Hallelujah. And, and there's just so much to it. But the simplicity of it all is that if we decree it, the angels of the Lord hearken unto the word of the Lord... And they bring it to pass. They bring it to pass. I've also heard about some of my friends who, who takes uh, long drives and, 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 and they'll say something like this, I hope we don't have an accident along the way, which really isn't that negative but it does kind of open a door. And I'm sure that the Lord is the one who has closed that door on those friends lots of times because he's always with us. He'll never let us go on our own. He never will. I will be with you always, always. I'll be with you. I'm, I'm sure that God has, has spared our lives, most of us in here, any number of times because that's who the Father, he's such a loving God. And he wants so much for his sons and his daughters. And he wants us to walk in victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. Amen. I, I just will not succumb. I will not succumb. I had a good talk with my doctor. <laughs> and and y'all just pray for Pastor Morris, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Doctor, I really appreciate you. I really do. And I, I'm, I'm, I was being very sincere, but I said, I, I, 
I've learned throughout my life to trust God. And so I'm going to trust him. And I also know that there are prophetic words that God has spoken into my life that are yet to come. Therefore, I know that when I say with his stripes I'm healed, I'm healed. I'm healed. Ooing and ouching, but with his stripes, I'm healed. You know. And, and I'll be very honest with you. Um, he had detected uh, AFib. When your heart does that. What is that? Yeah. And, and he had prescribed this, this uh, drug. And you all, listen, you take your prescriptions. Okay? All right? If you're on prescription medicines, take it. This is just the silly old pastor talking. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I, I read the side effects and I said, golly. <laughs> <laughs> this is a place where you have to watch your mouth. <laughs> so I've got this, so what's going to happen now? <laughs> you see? That, that's what the enemy would like to put in my mouth. But I went home, and I laid out before the Lord, and I said, Father, with all the faith that I have, I believe that AFib is gone. Amen. That was back in February. When was it? I went to the doctor. Anyhow. I haven't had one of those incidents since. Seriously, I'm not exaggerating. But you're also looking at a guy who began confessing 1 Peter 1.24 about two years ago when at the time this 68-year-old body was starting to moan and groan. And so I began speaking 1 Peter 2.24. Hallelujah. And I just admired Moses, 120 years old. Hallelujah. And his strength was not abated, and neither were his eyes dim. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. And then this man right here, this young man, he's confessing the word every night, praying the word every night, and what's going to, in the end, he's going to have brand new kidneys. Hallelujah. And, and I'm not just saying that. It's the power of faith in God's word that produces what God says. Are y'all with me? Yes. Y'all believe? Yes. Thou shalt decree a thing, and I, the Lord God Almighty, Amen. will establish it for you, because I love you. I love you with an everlasting love. I don't care what you think. I love you. And the depth of his love for us is beyond our understanding. It really is. The love of God. It, it's, it's just so powerful. And, and when you come to the revelation that, that God loves you, it secures you. It just really anchors you to know that the creator of all things loves me. Loved me enough that he allowed his son to die on the cross bearing my sins. He loved me that much. That, that's a lot of love. That's a lot of love. I look back at Abraham. And, and listen, you remember y'all remember how Abraham started out? When, when God told him uh, that 
uh, I will be a shield around you. And he went into Egypt. Sarai was a good-looking lady. And Abimelech saw her and, 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 and said, I'm going to take her into my harem. I'm going to take her for a wife. And, and <clears throat> so he talked to Abraham, and Abraham said, well, sure, you can have her. She's my sister. <laughs> now, what did God say? I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. He does it again. He, he fails to believe the word of God, and so he makes up another story. But then, as, as, as his walk with God progressive, progresses, now he believes the word of God. When God says, take thy son Isaac, thy only son Isaac, and take him out to Mount Moriah and make him a sacrifice for me. Abraham didn't hesitate, told his servants to get some donkeys together, loaded up with wood, we're going to Mount Moriah. And he went out there, his son Isaac, I know Isaac knew what was getting ready to happen, and he took his son, no hesitation, and what tells us in Hebrews, he did it because he believed that even if his son was dead, God would raise him up again. And so he tied him to that altar. He had that dagger raised, and God said, halt. Halt, Abraham. I have, I have uh, gave, my, gave my own lamb, whatever, whatever it was. You can go back there and you'll read it and you'll see. Anyhow, and, and, and so he grew in his faith. It's a process. Moses, remember Moses when God called him and, 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 and told him, look, God even told Moses, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. And you know, remember Moses just whined. Oh, God, I can't do it. And I, well, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? And it got so bad that God got angry. <laughs> but finally, Moses succumbed to what God told him he was going to do. And he come to the realization that God would speak out of his mouth. And Moses grew in faith. He believed God. Just think about it, you all. He walked into Pharaoh's uh, uh, capital, whatever you want to call it, ten times. Ten times he walked in and, and told Pharaoh to let my people go. And God protected him every time. He protected him every time. <clears throat> and all of those... All of those um, uh, plagues that God sent, it was the last one, you know, the firstborn of man and beast that, that Pharaoh let him go, and, and, and the uh, children of Israel were set free, and of course, here they go out to the Red Sea, and, and they, they camp at the Red Sea, and then they hear the noise of chariots coming, and, and all the Israelites, Whoa! Oh, they're going to kill us, they're going to kill us, they're going to take us out. Here's how, this is how Moses had grown. Fear not, for the Lord our God is with us. Behold the power of God. And he put that staff over the Red Sea, and a mighty wind came. Just think how great a wind that would take. And blew on the Red Sea, and it began to part. Because now Moses has grown in his faith. What does it say about the Old Testament? It was written for our example. And the children of Israel went across the Red Sea... And didn't get their feet wet. The power of God. 
with God, anything is possible. Confess that one every day, several times a day. The motive behind it is that at some point, we will have faith in what we're saying. That's the motive behind it. I honestly, you all, and this is not just to pep you up, I believe for a good future. I do. And sometimes I have to speak it for others who have not gotten to the place where I'm at, wherever that is. Sometimes I have to stand in the gap for someone else. But that's what I expect. And when I leave here, when it's time for me to go home, I'm going to be just like Moses, you know, can still throw a fast pitch, huh? can still kick a football, hallelujah, can still run with the young ones, <laughs> ah, yeah, hallelujah, with our words, we will be justified. And with our words, we shall be condemned. Amen. None of us here wants to be condemned. Okay? So, as the prophets say, this is the year of the mouth. Watch your mouth. <laughs> Watch your mouth. <laughs> Watch what comes out. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And he will. I know that I know that I know that you, all of you, are going to begin doing awesome things. I know that. I know that by the Spirit of God. I know it. I know that all of you are going to begin to operate in, in, in realms that you have never operated before. It is coming. I know by the Spirit of God that that is coming. But we have to do our part. I don't want to stand around and watch Walter do better than me. <laughs> huh? When I could be doing just as good as Walter if I step forward and I begin to decree the word of God. That's how this whole world works. That's how everything works. Everything in this world operates on words. Everything. So hold fast the confession of your faith. Decree a thing. And God says to you and I, I will establish it for you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you, and we give your great name praise. Father, we cannot thank you enough in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Holy Spirit. He is our helper, our strengthener, our counselor, our protector, he is so many things. For me, Father, the number one thing is a helper. He's helped me so much. And I thank you. And I give your name praise. I thank you and give your name praise, Father, that as we grow in Christ, we began to experience the realm where you live. We began to see with the eyes of our spirit. We began to hear with the words of our spirit. And we thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen.